Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing Scott Peterson right here on Flashback Forensics. In 2002, Scott Peterson was convicted for the murder of his wife, Lacey Peterson. At the time, she was eight and a half months pregnant. At that time, he was sentenced to death, which has since been overturned, so now he just has life without parole. He also attempted to get a new trial, which didn't happen. What we're going to be looking at today are interviews before he was arrested. He was a suspect during these interviews, but he had not yet been arrested. Before we get started, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. This interview is from 2002. It's with Diane Sawyer. It was when his wife was still considered missing. We're going to just jump right in. I think everybody sitting at home wants the answer to the same question. Did you murder your wife? No, no. I did not. And I had absolutely nothing to do with her disappearance. And All right, so one of the things that we're already going to notice is his tone. Now, when there's a televised interview, obviously everybody can feel a little awkward at first, so I'm not going to judge and base too much on this, but I do want you to consider he kind of half chuckled, saying, no, I didn't do it. When you have been accused of murdering your wife or even the suggestion of that, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit of anger, frustration, looking a little bit offended. He is going to be trying to stay as calm as possible throughout this whole interview. But watch this again in the context of it being suggested that you did something to your wife. Check this out. Uh, I did not. And I had absolutely nothing to do with her disappearance. And, and use the word murder. And yeah, I mean, that is a, a possibility. Just look at how strikingly strange this is. He's saying that it's possible that his wife and unborn child have been murdered. And he's got a huge smile across his face. I think that what his plan probably was my assumption was, and we're going to get more into this as we go, would be that he wants to come across as friendly and not aggressive, and that he wants to come across as calm. I think those would have been his two intentions. So come across as friendly and non-threatening and calm. But he overplayed that hand. Even in the first few seconds, we're seeing an incredibly strange and peculiar way to behave. Let's just watch this first section again. Absolutely nothing to do with her disappearance. And, and use the word murder, and yeah, I mean, that is... A, a possibility. And he also said, you use the word murder, and yeah, I mean, it's not that he's confessing necessarily, but it's interesting that he is acknowledging it in that way. It's very unusual. Um, it's not one we're ready to accept, and it creeps in my mind late at night. And I talked about this a bit during the Chris Watts interview, if you've watched that video, which is the awkward smiles. The smiles are not because he's feeling uncomfortable. In a grave situation like this, the awkwardness of smiling on accident is going to get hidden. I see a lot of people comment about Duper's delight. I don't think that that's what it is at this point. I think that this is an attempt to try to seem friendly and non-threatening and not seem like somebody who's capable of the kind of anger that would be required to murder somebody. So what this says to me is that the degree of anger that he's capable of showing is something that he doesn't like people to see, but I think that it is extremely high. My assumption would be that it wasn't a cold and calculated murder, that it was a violent and angry murder, would be my assumption based on what we're seeing here. And early in the morning and during the day, all we can think about is the right resolution is to find her well. But as you know, increasingly, in the public, suspicion has turned on you. Yes, definitely. Did you ever hit her? Did you ever injure her? No, no, my God, no. Um, violence towards women and is... Uh... So the way he's responding is problematic, and I'll explain why. So he's not saying, I would never hurt Lacey. I would never do something like that. He's just saying very generally, violence against women is not okay. Once again, he's building a case of, look, I'm not the kind of guy who could do this. This is not the denial of someone who didn't do it. This is the denial, denial of someone who is trying to use impression management, who's trying to, to build a case for why he's not the kind of person who would do this. So that's a mistake. You know, the, the fact that he's not personalizing it, the fact that he's not directly responding to the question, saying, no, I would never hurt Lacey, saying, no, violence against women is not okay. That is trying to garner favor with people thinking, well, that's what people want to hear, so that's what I'll say. It's strategically, it's a mistake. Listen to him say this again. Did you ever hit her? Did you ever injure her? No, no, my God, no. Um... Violence towards women is unapproachable. It is the most disgusting act to me. Um, and I know that uh, suspicion has turned me. And it's, um, it's 
asked her to be one because I'm her husband, and that's a natural thing. And I've heard all the statistics on all the news shows about that being, you know, someone that uh, a husband, ex-husband, a boyfriend. All right. One thing that you're noticing, this is just like Ted Bunny and Chris Watts. I talk about the eyes a lot. That the direction people look is pretty immaterial in my opinion. I know some people disagree with that, but the direction he's looking off to the side and all that stuff, I, I don't really attribute any meaning to that. I do attribute meaning to him closing his eyes at times. So just watch when he does that. He does slow eye closes, and I don't know if that's him shielding his eyes. I don't know if that's him attempting to appear calm, but we are going to see a pattern with that. Let's just watch that again. Being, you know, someone that uh, a husband, ex-husband, a boyfriend that is statistically. And you'll notice when he said a husband. So in a sense, he's acknowledging that a husband could do this. He obviously is a husband that did it. So let's 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 watch him say this again. The statistics on all the news shows about that being, you know, someone that uh, a husband, ex-husband, a boyfriend. So he waited till he got through the word husband to open his eyes. I don't think that was conscious. I think that's unconscious. I think that his body was trying to protect itself because oftentimes closing our eyes, crossing our arms, blocking our bodies is a way to feel protected. And so I think in this point, he's trying to protect himself because he knows that once suspicion fully turns on him and they have more evidence, he's in trouble. That is statistically the one who would be responsible for her disappearance. And um, I'm sorry, I forgot your question. Sorry. Did you ever hit her? Did you no, ever injure her? No, no, never. Um, I, was, I was answered your question because of the suspicion that it's been turned to me. And it turned to me because... So he already has points that he wants to make. Once again, this is not an innocent person who is trying to give a genuine interview. He has points that he thinks are important to get across to the public. So he's forgetting questions or he's coming back to things because he wants to make sure he gets to these points. Aside from the fact that he denied doing it, He's trying to say certain things that I think he believes matter. Of the inappropriate romantic. Um... So one thing that may be obvious is how calm he is. So he seems very calm, very measured. Like I said, this is impression management. He wants to show people how could such a calm, soft-spoken person commit such a heinous act. So this is intentional, and that's something to pay attention to at times. It's not always really meaningful. Sometimes people are introverted and quiet. That doesn't necessarily mean that they committed a crime. But in his situation, he's showing such a measured approach. He's showing so little emotion. This seems like an overt attempt to do impression management, to make people see him the way he wants them to. Came forward. I'm glad you did. You are? Definitely. All right, so... If you'll notice when he said, I'm glad she did, watch this facial expression. Fry came forward. I'm glad. All right, so he raised his eyebrows. That's usually a look of surprise. So I believe that he's surprised that she came forward. And so that's what we're seeing is that he didn't anticipate that when he talked to her, when he told her the things that he did. So he was surprised that she came forward. She did. You are? Definitely. Why? It's the appropriate thing to do. And it really shows what a person of character she is. Um, and it... Now, we just saw a half-cocked smile. Watch this. Those, what a person character. All right, so you see this one-sided smile. You've probably heard me talk about this before. That's a sign of contempt. That shows that he's feeling contemptuous towards her. This is his own subtle ways of showing his own anger and contempt. It may look a little bit like he's smiling on both sides, but to me it looks more dramatically on one side. As we know, one-sided smile is contempt. Character she is, um, and it allows us to... Um, get back looking for Lacey. Did you tell her that you were not married? I did, I did. Um, and then when uh, Lacey disappeared, um, I called her and admittedly it wasn't immediately, it was a couple days after Lacey. Now one thing you'll also notice is his gaze at Diane Sawyer, he does not take his eyes off of her very often. We see this oftentimes with psychopaths, they stare through people. Now he might offset that a little bit because he seems, he has more of a for lack of a better term, sort of a normal look. And sometimes when people have this, we don't notice when they are staring intensely. Jorn Vandersloot did the same thing. He had sort of a boyish look, and he would stare deeply at people, but it might not be obvious. And to some people, I'm sure they notice, but I don't think it's as obvious to everyone just because of the way he looks. I think Scott Peterson's very much the same way. But in many ways, 
he has his eyes on Diane Sawyer because he feels defensive and needs to protect himself in this situation. And very rarely, although occasionally, very rarely does he take his eyes off of her. Disappearance. I telephoned her and told her the truth. The and truth? That I was married, that Lacey had disappeared. She didn't know about it at that point. And then she contacts the police. But Fry says she first found out about Lacey from Do the you know news, about not from Scott. Were you in love with her? All right, so that was sort of a half-committed no, and he closed his eyes. I'm not sure that he was in love with her, but he didn't like this question. That, at least that's what his facial expression says. Was this the first time? Are there others out there? No. There's no one else who can come forward? No. I owe a tremendous... But he hates this idea that there is some, that there could be someone else that could come forward. There's no one else who can come forward. See, as I've said before, we close our eyes when we think or see something we don't like. I don't know if it's just the concept or the idea that someone else could say something, but he really does not like, like this idea because he knows there's more to be said. So I think the idea that anybody else could have anything negative to say about him is scary and he doesn't like it. Forward. No. I owe a tremendous uh, apology to, to everyone. All right. You'll notice a head shake. He doesn't believe what he's saying. Watch this. This is very subtle. I owe a tremendous uh, apology to, to See. I owe a tremendous apology to everyone. He doesn't believe that for a second. I told my wife. When? In, um, early December. Did it cause a rupture in the marriage? It was not um, a positive, obviously. So he doesn't want to acknowledge the word rupture because it's a strong, loaded, powerful word. And that could imply that he's capable of violence. That could imply that he's capable of doing something. And because he's calculated, he's coming back and saying, no, he's trying to put different words to it because he's trying so hard to do this impression management. He's trying so hard to give a specific impression of how he wants to look to people. Watch his reaction to this again. Did it cause a rupture in the marriage? It was not um, a positive, obviously. It's a Right, so he's acknowledging it's not a positive, but he won't say something as severe as rupture. Uh, you know, inappropriate. Um. See, mild words, inappropriate. Uh, he, he, he will not say that it caused conflict or it caused a fight. That in and of itself is suspicious because obviously anybody that's going to tell their pregnant wife that, and Diane Sawyer gets to this in a second, but anybody that's going to tell their pregnant wife that they had an affair it is going to cause conflict. It is not going to be that it was inappropriate or anything so mild. So once again, that in and of itself is suspicious, that he's refusing to acknowledge any level of real, genuine conflict. But it was not something that we weren't um, dealing with. A lot of arguing? No. 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 Um, I, I, you know, I can't say that that even you know she was okay with the idea but uh, it wasn't anything that would break us apart there wasn't a lot of anger no yeah. yep see once again she wasn't okay with the idea i mean what a ridiculous way to phrase this do you really expect people to believe that an eight and a half month pregnant woman learns her husband has had an affair and is saintly and casual about it accommodating makes a peace with it well I, yeah I, you don't know no one knows our relationship but us so here's a place of comfort for him no one knows our relationship but us that gives him power because ultimately that is true if there's nothing that people can prove if nobody has them on video talking no one knows their relationship with them so for him, this is a position of power, so he feels comfortable saying what he wants because it is impossible to prove what their relationship was like at this moment. So he can say, yeah, it was, and you have to believe it is however I say it is. Um, and that's at peace with it, not happy about it. Why did you tell her? It was the right thing. 
So that almost it sounded like he was asking a question. It was the right thing. Listen to the tone of his voice, which means that obviously that's not why he told her, because it was the right thing. L listen to this again. Why did you tell her? It was the right thing. Because again, you know that people sitting at home have imagined that either you were in love with someone else, mm -hmm. therefore you decided to get rid of this entanglement, namely your All right, so that's a point of weakness for him, that people think that he's in love with someone else. Watch his eyes close that when she says that. Either you were in love with someone else, mm -hmm. therefore you decided... And his eyes are so slow when he closes them. It's so exaggerated. So I don't know if this is him shielding his eyes or if it's his attempt to be very, very calm. But obviously, there's a response there. I mean, we're seeing it, so it, it, it's meaningful in some way. To get rid of this entanglement, namely your wife and your child. Or there was just an angry confrontation. Neither of those was the case. It's, it's that simple. He insisted all was well between him and Lacey. Tell me about the state of your marriage. Hmm. What, what kind of marriage was it? God, I mean, the first word that comes to mind is, you know, glorious. I mean, we took care of each other very well. Um, she was amazing. He is amazing. So I'm sure you caught that. She was amazing. She is amazing. He caught it very quickly. And he said it fast enough that maybe some people wouldn't notice. But saying she was amazing. He is talking about her in the past tense. Listen to this. Um, she was amazing. He is amazing. Another story that is out there is that the kitchen was spotless. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was still a wet mop around, which indicated somebody had cleaned something very mm -hmm. recently. Lacey was mopping the floors when I left that morning. Um, yes, the house is spotless. She had a cleaning lady on uh, Monday, the 23rd. So this is an area that's confident for him. You're seeing less of the eye closing. He likes this part of the story. He feels very good about this, probably because if things are spotless, then that means they didn't find anything, and he can just say, well, we're just very tidy people. We just clean a lot. So if the cleaning lady had been there, why have, why have to clean again? Dog, two cats. Muddy backyard. She mopped those floors every day. Yeah, look at this smirk. He feels very happy with himself about this answer because he believes this is a convincing response. I feel okay about that. People have to believe me, and there's no way to prove otherwise. Look, look at the smirk that that emerges right here. Muddy backyard. She mopped those floors every day. See, great excuse. So he feels like I'm three. You know, with when somebody has has murdered someone else. They basically are going to have a mental checklist of all the things that are weak points for them. So no DNA evidence or the kitchen's clean. Check, you know, and so he's going to feel really good about about being able to provide something that he thinks is a comprehensive and coherent answer. Whereas earlier, when there's certain questions he's being asked that he doesn't like as much, like one about whether or not they're having conflict, you're going to see more of the eye closing. You're going to see more of him disliking what he's being asked. And I emptied the bucket when I returned. I'll go back to a couple of other questions people have. I've heard so many people say, Christmas Eve, mm. you have a very pregnant wife, and you decide to go fishing? Mm -hmm. What did that say about the two of you? Well, um, we had plans that evening with mom, Lacey's mom, over at her house. Um, frankly, uh, Christmas preparation. So you see the licking of the lips. What this probably says is that when this question got asked, adrenaline starts coursing a little bit. It's drying his mouth out a little bit. It's a very subtle thing to notice, and certainly people are capable of licking their lips. That doesn't always guarantee that they're lying. But when we see a change, I haven't seen him do that a lot throughout this interview. So when we see a change, we pay attention to it. So this question's one that maybe he feels less confident about than the spotless kitchen. Her house. Um, frankly, uh, Christmas preparations were, were done. What did you get her for Christmas? Oh, a Louis Vuitton wallet. Um, but preparations were made. Um, her plan for the day was to prepare gingerbread cookies. Um, my day was open to 
um, either play golf or go fishing. I chose fishing that day, which is, you know, a uh, choice I made, and I obviously regret now, you know, if I could just decide to stay home. That's what would have happened. And once again, the the slight smirk emerges as he talks about some of these things. I don't know if he feels like he's performing well necessarily, but he feels pretty good about something as this is continuing to go on. Maybe he feels like he's getting out of the danger zone. You haven't mentioned your son. Hmm. That was, it's so hard. That was, it's so hard. Once again, he's referring to things in the past tense, and he's correcting himself. That's the second time he's done that. Listen to this again. That was, it's so hard. Their baby boy was due on February 16th. Tell me about the nursery. Can't go in there. The door is closed until there's someone to put in there. But... And maybe it's just me, but his level of calmness is annoying me and maybe that's just my own personal reaction but it's he has zero passion about any of this stuff so for someone who is trying to find their wife obviously we're seeing what appears to be maybe he's been crying or maybe he's trying to at this point but we're seeing him maintain such a sense of reservation and being so subdued uh, it to me it's almost frustrating to watch it's Are you afraid police will arrest you? No. I know there is there's no basis and I know nothing. So right now we are seeing a, a, a tear run down his face, but we have yet to see any face that actually shows sadness. Sometimes we see faces with no tears. Now we're seeing tears with no demonstration whatsoever that he's actually feeling or experiencing sadness in any real way. Thing to do with their disappearance. So there, there's no uh, you know, possible evidence or anything like that. So this is basically the end of the interview. Hopefully watching this gives you a basis for better understanding how to observe people like Scott Peterson. When people have acted in such psychopathic ways and have committed such atrocious and heinous crimes, there is always a certain type of personality and behavior that they tend to fall into. For him, his is to be withdrawn and neutral and to show as little emotion as humanly possible. But if you watch with a critical eye, you can understand what his attempt was, what he was trying to do and what was missing. When people have real emotions, when people have crises, it does not look like this. And before we wrap things up, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe so you can see more content just like this. All right. Thanks for watching.